Let me start by asking you this question. What were your first dreams? Now, as the father of a four-year-old and a two-year-old, I get to relive my childhood through them. David and Evan are so young, they don't have rational dreams about being a doctor or a teacher or a lawyer. Their dreams are a bit more fantastic, extraordinary, you might say. Evan wants to fly. Do you want to be an airplane pilot, I ask? No, I want to be a bird. (laughs) Or yesterday, a butterfly was what he wanted to be. It's quite a dream, really. David wants to be a pirate. In his mind, it's a noble profession. I've warned him, not much job security there. He puts on a bandana and his plastic hook. He declares the bed to be his ship. Sometimes he wants Daddy to be part of the crew. Sometimes he wants Daddy to be the TikTok croc that crawls around the ship. Sometimes he wants Daddy to be Peter Pan. At the end of the game, Daddy is almost always sore but smiling. If somehow I could fly, Evan says. If somehow I could sail, David says. What were your first dreams? The first dream I can remember involved careers. Growing up in St. Louis, I dreamed of playing professional baseball for the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, I hope you'll forgive me. I hadn't moved to South Carolina yet, so I hadn't been baptized as a Braves fan at the time I was diehard Cardinals. I would be a pitcher, and I would spend most of the game striking out the opponents. But I would break the trend, because I would be a pitcher who could also hit. I'd have huge muscles, lots of home runs. If somehow... I could just be a St. Louis Cardinal. Then something happened, you see. I played baseball. (laughs) One year. The closest I came to the mound involved playing with ant piles out in the outfield. Despite my best efforts to knock the ball out of the park, I rarely knocked it out of the infield. At the end of the season, each player was awarded with a trophy that included one of his best accomplishments. They really struggled to make my trophy. I still have it at home. At the end of the year, they put Chris George, hit by pitch 13 times. (laughs) Needless to say, the dream died. What were your first dreams? What were your last dreams? And by last, I don't mean your final dreams. I mean your most recent dreams. And here's the real question. Was it easier to remember your first dreams or your last dreams? One of my great fears is that we've stopped dreaming We no longer dare to imagine what might be. We've bought into the idea that we must simply take the world as it is, instead of envisioning something that's better. We believe that dreams like wishing upon a star, like throwing pennies into a fountain, these are all well and good for children. But we don't need them anymore as adults. Instead of growing into our dreams, we grow out of them. Instead of growing into our faith, we grow out of it. The Bible is filled with dreamers, you know. Abraham dreamed of a promised land. Joseph with his coat, he was a dreamer too. Moses dreamed of deliverance, and Jacob wrestled with God in a dream. David dreamed of God as a shepherd. And those prophets, oh, those messy prophets, the names that are so hard to pronounce at the end of the Hebrew Bible, those prophets, they dreamed of a world that could still be saved, where justice would roll down like a river. Then Jesus came as a dreamer. 
He dreamed of a world where the last would be first. He dreamed of a world where the hungry would be fed and the thirsty would be filled. He dreamed of a world where those who mourn would be comforted and the meek would inherit the earth. He dreamed of a world where the blind would see and the lame would walk and the silent would speak. Paul was a dreamer too. And in today's text, Paul gives us a rare snippet of his autobiography. At first, we may fear that he's going to give a graduation speech since his introduction includes such a lengthy list of accolades, circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews. Paul was destined for success. He was Phi Beta Kappa. He was an Eagle Scout. He got a legacy admission to the Ivy League schools. He was born to the right people. He had all the advantages and privileges bestowed by birth. As to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. This is how Paul's story starts. And to be honest, it may not be that different from most of our stories. For many of us, our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents were Christians. We attended church before we were even born. We have counted every tile in the sanctuary ceiling several times. We've memorized John 3.16. We know every word in the Baptist hymnal. We can identify every casserole in the fellowship hall. We've consumed our share of fried chicken. We've endured our share of long sermons. And we've eaten our weight in square communion wafers. Sounds familiar. But Paul's story doesn't stop with this impressive list. When we get to the heart and soul of Paul's story, he's not talking about parents and church attendance records. He's not talking about career choices. Paul says, my story is Jesus. He is unapologetic in his proclamation. He doesn't worry about political correctness. I regard everything as a loss compared to the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I regard all things as rubbish, that I may find Christ and be found in Him. I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection. Does your story sound like Paul's story? When people look at you and me, do they see something different about us? Do people say, he doesn't care so much about accumulating stuff? She's not obsessed with appearances, you know. It doesn't seem to matter about accolades and fame and fortune. He has this deep inner peace. She seems to be working with a different set of values. Is the source of your life that which gives you joy and peace and purpose? Is it Jesus? Does God's light shine through your life? Paul tells us his story, then he reveals his dream. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I've already gotten there, but I keep pressing on and straining forward. Paul is not finished. He's starting. Apart from Jesus, no single person has played a more significant role in Christian history than Paul. Paul's missionary journey spread the gospel around the world. Without Paul, we might not be here today. What was his secret? Paul dared to dream. Paul dared to say, if somehow, 
And Paul dared to believe that somehow he and we may attain resurrection of the dead. Paul's dreams consumed his life and ministry. So now, what are your dreams? Not what were your dreams. What are your dreams? God loves for us to dream. God loves to hear us pray, if somehow. But I need to warn you, God will answer that prayer. Be prepared. When you say if, God will say when. Be prepared to change somehow to in this way. Be prepared as God changes someday to this day, this place. Be prepared for God can use you to make a dream come true. Do we still have visions? Do we still dream dreams? At Pentecost so long ago, Peter proclaimed this message, God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall see visions. So your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. If we have no dreams, we need to close up shop. If the answer is no, we are no longer in communion with those early Christians who dared to dream. Those early Christians who faced persecution and martyrdom and still dared to dream of a time when every knee would bow and every tongue would confess. Living in the midst of a society obsessed with violence, they dared to dream of a time when God's peace would reign. Living as oppressed people, they dared to dream of a time of liberation. And then they worked to make that dream a reality. They worked to make that dream come true. Let me close with this story. I read about a little girl who was having a dream. And in the middle of her dream, she was awakened by her mother. She started telling her mother all about the dream, and she was stunned. Her mother couldn't believe all the details the little girl remembered. A house in a faraway land, a horse and a carriage, and a trip to a beautiful mountain. Wrapped up in her daughter's retelling, the mother asked, what did the mountain look like? The daughter said, I don't know. You woke me up. You woke me up before I got there. Her mother felt terrible, as any mother would, I'm sure. She apologized for spoiling the dream. I'm so sorry I had to wake you. The little girl said, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not finished dreaming yet. My hope and prayer for Smoke Rise Baptist Church and for each of our lives is that we are not finished dreaming yet. For somehow if God began a good work in you, somehow if God began a good work in me, then God will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. Let's pray. God, so long ago you spoke through the Apostle Paul, God, who challenged his original hearers and who challenges us to be dreamers. God, we pray that we would follow in his footsteps, that we would follow in the footsteps of those who have gone before us in our faith, the footsteps of those who have gone before us in this congregation. God, that we would dare to dream, and then we would commit our lives to making that dream a reality. God, thank you for your faithfulness to this congregation. May this church always be found faithful to you. In the name of Christ, amen. So long ago, Jesus came to his first disciples with a simple calling, 
Come, follow me. It is the same invitation that is issued each week here at Smoke Rise Church. Come and follow. If you've never made that decision for the first time, I encourage you to do so. To come to this altar table, the associate pastor, Ernie Forrester, will be here to meet you. Or perhaps you've been visiting the church or you're visiting today and you say, I want to be in a church filled with dreamers. If so, we invite you to come. That is Smoke Rise Baptist Church. Ernie will be here to meet you. Whatever your decision, this is our hymn of dedication as we stand together to sing. Thank you.